Please welcome Diane Curry. Thank you. And thank you, Tevis Smiley. My God. I've watched him grow up <coughs> in this town. Um, Tevis started flirting with me at Neiman Marcus. <laughs> I used to go there often just to find out how much money I'd left there. And I see this young man standing always, he thinks, Hello, Miss Carol. I look at him and say, Tavis Smiley. How do you do, Mr. Smiley? <laughs> Maybe a month or so later, I see this man standing. Hello, Miss Carol. Hello, Tavis Smiley. Then Tavis Smiley began to work. And I said, Look at this. I've been looking at this brilliant young man all this time. And now he's really, really an adult. And it's lovely to see what he's done in this strange, wonderful, peculiar town. Um, I want to thank all of you. I'm so sorry, those of you who went home. You missed a lot. <laughs> <clears throat> and I thank you for the privilege of this honor. Um, and I think that probably your memory of my career is much better than myself. I feel very like Chloris here. I have spoken so many times about my work and my life, and my, I just can't take it another time. It's, um, <laughs> I'm beginning to wonder who the hell is that, you know, doing all those things that I've heard about, but I really did them. And I really had a good time. I, I've written something proper here. I'm not going to read any poetry this evening. <laughs> Cloris, I love and respect you and venerate your name. I think she's one of the most talented people I've ever known in my life. And that does not always come in a package of complete sanity. <laughs> <laughs> I know, because I'm very crazy myself. <laughs> I, I thank you for, I hope I can read this, it's just awful, I don't want to do what. I, I thank you for remi reminding me of how vital a part television has played in my life. And like many of us who are still active, <laughs> we may be limping, but we're active, <laughs> working at what we love, we don't spend a great deal of time uh, remembering and reminiscing about our careers. It's just too damn long to go back and think of all that. 1951? 1951, I started in this business. Um, it's all we can do to keep focused on the present with an eye to the next job, the next early call. In today's life, the next appointment with the doctor. And I seldom look at scrapbooks or memorabilia, but you know, there is Google if necessary. Since I was first notified of this honor, I have been thinking of how wonderful <clears throat> it will be to finally say thank you to you. I've never had the chance to say that before, for welcoming me into the industry when it was so new that it wasn't really considered an industry. And I can honestly say to you that television has really shaped my life. Um, there was a time when I would never have admitted that, but that is really true. Um, it seems hard to believe that almost 60 years ago I made my television debut as a sh on a show called Chance of a Lifetime. Um, kind of like the original American Idol or something like that. But we were not cruel to each other on Chance of a Lifetime. There was a lot of cruelty in, in our culture today. Everybody's on a contest 
God, you can't even look at television without somebody's in a contest. It's nice not to have to compete for something. It's, but um, no matter what I was doing, film, Broadway, or nightclubs, I was always welcomed back to my first professional home, television. When <clears throat> I did my first television show in the early 50s, color just had arrived to television, that is. Um, <laughs> literally and in any meaning you wish to give to that. I, I found it extremely funny that it was a, a major decision to hire me on one of the early shows that I did because I'm black. And when I arrived, <clears throat> I learned that the makeup for the new show, I think it was kinescope uh, cameras, was a major issue. And we all wore um, this strange thing, regardless of our ethnicity. The makeup was kind of a zinc, kind of bluish, greenish makeup. And that was especially for this balance that had to be reached on this camera to make us all look, quote, normal, unquote. Everyone's skin was primrose blue. <laughs> and Freeman Gosden and Charles Carell, the stars, and me, plus several other Caucasian performers, were all there. I am not saying that I was one of the Caucasian performers. <laughs> were all there in blue makeup, <clears throat> staring at each other. This was a half century before James Cameron created Avatar. <laughs> and that's all I could think of when I saw that film. <clears throat> the colored television. <clears throat> When the manager came in, we were all in hysterics. We looked like uh, Martian minstrels. But um, initially, there had been a question if I should have been hired because I'm a black American. And at this point, there was a question whether anyone should have been hired. And I had to laugh recently when I went online, Google myself, and I, I learned a lot. I had to. I was trying to find something to say to you this evening other than thank you and let's all go home. Um, and there are some things that are adorable, such as you realize that there is such a thing as a Julia lunchbox <laughs> and that I was the first black Barbie doll in the United States of America. That's part. <laughs> and I remember when Hal Cantor, the creator, and Dave Tebbett, the casting director, said to me, you're going to do some wonderfully important things for this country. And so I consider the lunchbox and the Barbie doll. <laughs> In 1968, um, <laughs> my agent made an appointment for me with Hal Cantor, the renowned writer who had created a new show and was in the business of casting. And our meeting was held in the Polo Lounge in this hotel. Um, when I arrived, Hal was discussing the character, and he saw me enter and said to my agent, now there's the kind of girl I'm looking for. Like that young lady right there. That's what we need. She's dressed like a good-looking, average housewife. And my agent smiled and said, I'm very happy that you like her, because that is Diane Carroll. <laughs> he didn't know it. I was wearing an haute couture Givenchy black dress that he liked as an average American housewife. <laughs> I had very profound concerns about coming to Los Angeles. I had very profound concerns about coming to Los Angeles, and I still do. <clears throat> I can't figure this town out, but I'm not leaving. <clears throat> I just thought if I leave New York, I may never get back because they have a way of eating your life out there. And I could just see myself going down the tarmac at JFK, scratching, saying, don't take me. I came for 13 weeks in 1967. And, um, I'm still here, and I'm not sorry about that. I've watched television as I've seen every producer, writer, 
in this town. Everyone has had strange, different opinions of who and what the hell I am. And I've been asked, you know, who the hell do you think you are? And I've also been able to answer because I'm, I'm an East Coast person. We are fresh people. We, are, we can answer almost anything. I know who the hell I think I am. I'm trying to convince you <laughs> of who the hell I am. And um, uh, 45 years ago, Historically, um, Hal Cantor began his project called Julia only three years after desegregation. And Martin Luther King Jr. and Bobby Kennedy were still with us. Uh, when he offered the show, he and Dave Tebbett, head of casting at NBC, were explaining to me that my character, Julia, would be the first sole black female star and a situation comedy in a non-stereotypical role. Um, they explained how they envisioned the future of television and that my character would be something that had never been seen on the screen. That's an enormous pressure, an enormous responsibility, and the only thing that they said that made me go forward with enthusiasm and hope was that I would be a part of the hopes for racial progress in, in the United States. In the beginning, I didn't really think that I had anything in common with this character. Um, she was a single black mother who, as a nurse and raising a child, and then I realized that I was this character. I am, I said to myself, a single black working as an actress mother, raising a child. And on top of that, my mother was a nurse. So there were so many things about the situation that seemed to, if I couldn't find them in my actress pool, I could find them in my daily life. <clears throat> and we all know that television is never easy. Um, I was getting a lot of pressure from the N uh, NAACP as well as other organizations. And the, uh, the pressure was that I should make the character more um, uh, urgent and strong and aggressive. And um, we didn't see her that way. We thought she did it with more intellect than that. But um, I really didn't know what the responsibilities were of Julia. How naive was I, really? But when you're in the thick of it, you don't savor the potential or think about the long term. You think about raising your family and earning enough money to keep body and soul together. And years later, I was welcomed back to television, but this time I, I had much to say. In 1983, I just completed several months on Broadway in the drama of Agnes of God. That's hard work. Good Lord, is that hard work. And um, I was resting at home watching something called Dynasty, and, and an idea popped into my head. So we decided to call Aaron Spelling, and that's what I said to Aaron. Aaron, I would like to be the first black bitch on television. And Aaron was thrilled. He loved the idea. And I, I thought, you know, we've had wonderful black women. Uh, we've had women like Miss Jane Pittman and uh, many loving, wise-cracking black women's roles. But I wanted to play a character that could sling the dirt, look stunning in a couture Nolan Miller gown, and wear 10-inch shoulder pads while knocking somebody out. <laughs> I thought I wanted the beauty of our lives here in the United States. We're very fortunate to have the lives that we have as Americans. And I wanted to have that life and be nasty at the same time. <clears throat> in meeting with the show's, uh, meetings with the show's new creators, Richard and Esther Shapiro, I asked that my character, which I see Diane Carroll has just explained to you on the film, be a power-hungry, tough, white male corporate mogul. And thus, the character was created. Um, the Shapiros gave me a chance, to tell you the truth, to have more fun 
than I had ever had on television. <laughs> Dynasty was just a hoot. <laughs> Every day we came to work laughing and singing and trying on clothes. <laughs> Later we would learn the lines, but... <laughs> and Joan Collins and I knew how to savor what we had. We were both women of a certain age, and we knew there might not be many more wonderful roles like this, so we attacked our work and each other <coughs> with a vengeance. So tonight I say again that it is an honor to be recognized in an industry that can appreciate its usefulness as an instrument for progress and at the same time fill the need for some raucous, devilish, guilty, silly pleasure. By the time I appeared on A Different World, I was amazed at how integrated television had become. The young actors, directors, writers, executives had experienced television in their lives firsthand. They didn't have to learn it from someone else. They were brought up in the world of television. They understood the responsibility of television. America was exposed to its first black college campus. And I must thank Ms. Susan Fales Hill as an executive producer and contributing writer. She was kind enough to choose to spoon feed me into this complex creativity of a show called A Different World. And by the way, I am exceedingly proud of her also because she happens to be my niece. Um, I learned so much practicing my craft on television. Television was my education. I left my schooling at NYU to act and sing on television. I was afraid if I waited four more years that I would not feel the magic, the fire in my gut, as they say. I'm sorry about that. I am very sorry that I did that in some ways, but in other ways I, I'm really not. Um, Television was the perfect synthesis for me to develop as an actress and as a human being. So, because I love women who are crazy and I love all the things that they say, tonight by saying thank you to you, I want to quote Ruth Gordon. <laughs> and when she won her Oscar for Rosemary's Baby, she said, this is very, very encouraging. <laughs> Thank you.